Hey, this is Joe Hubbard from Joe Hubbard Bass Videos and welcome to Advanced Bass. This particular lesson is on increasing your technical development. So with that in mind, grab your bass and let's get started. In order to reach a higher peak in your musical maturity, we need to focus on building a solid foundation that will enable you to develop your time, tone, touch, and taste. There's a lot of people out there who place a priority on things like feel and dynamics, which are extremely important, but without a high standard of technical facility on your chosen instrument, the level at which you'll be able to develop these other elements will be extremely limited. However, when the subject of technical development is mentioned in the world of bass education, a problem exists in the actual perception of developing a strong technical foundation. Too often, terms like left and right hand gymnastics, bass aerobics, spider exercises, and musically unrelated finger dexterity patterns are overused and often unsuccessful in their methodology. The main problem with these methods is that an overwhelming majority are not based around or related to the immutable components of music, which include melody, rhythm, and harmony. When I was first learning how to play the bass guitar, I was always amazed at how proficient horn players and piano players were technically compared to bass guitar players. When a sax player pulled his horn out of the case, he would flawlessly play up and down the horn. These weren't just scales running up and down the instrument, but organized lines over chord changes that served as warm-up exercises for that player. It took me a while to figure out how the average horn player or piano player worked on this technically, so I'd like to share some of this methodology with you today. Let's take a look at an exercise that I've used to help increase bass-specific technical awareness across the instrument when playing major seventh chords moving up and down in half steps. I'm going to be using four note groupings or tetrachords from the Lydian scale starting on the root of the first chord, moving to the fifth of the second chord, and so forth up and back down the fingerboard. Remember that it's important to keep your ears wide open and your mind switched on at all times while you're practicing. This is the only way that you'll develop a solid musical understanding of what you're working on while making that connection of increasing technical facility on the bass guitar. Okay, let's take a look at this exercise. What we've got here is an exercise where we have major seventh chords moving up and down the fretboard in half steps. And what's great about this is it takes it away from any relationship to a single tonality. In other words, it creates more of a polytonality concept because every time we move a half step out, we're really in a different tonality. We're going to use the Lydian scale or the Lydian mode over this, which is the root, second, three, sharp four, five, six, seven, and then root. It's just like a major scale with a sharp four. And unlike a major scale, I can resolve on any one of those notes over the major seventh chord. So melodically, everything works on this in this scale uh, to the harmony that we're working on. So it's got the root, we have the third, the fifth, the seven, then I've got the nine, the sharp eleven, and the thirteen. And those are the notes that irrespective of harmony function, they work over a major seventh chord. So what a lot of people do is grab a hold of this and then they say, okay, let's do this uh, scale exercise in half steps, something like this. And so forth up and back down the neck. That's fine, but that's a little bit more of a beginner's exercise. What we wanna do is take this one step further and show you how horn players and piano players might work on this. And uh, it, it sort of uh, will enable you to develop a stronger command and mastery uh, technically of your instrument along with it relating to something. That's one of the big problems with bass specific technical development is it's often sold to you as a disconnected entity from melody, rhythm, and harmony, which is, you know, in my opinion, is an incorrect way to learn. 
because you don't want to learn anything that you don't think has a relationship to the components of music. I came to a stage in my development many, many years ago where I thought, if it doesn't include those components of music, I throw it out. It's not any good. And there's people that hold on to that stuff like dear life, you know, like, you know, museum relics, they hold on to it. And to be quite honest, you know, a lot of that stuff that doesn't relate to the components of music, you don't really need, and it saves time because, you know, if you're doing all these kind of weird exercises, spider exercises, or finger permutation exercises that aren't related to anything musically, it takes time out of your day to actually go through those things. So you're, you know, you might be marginally improving a little bit on those, but there's a, a more direct way. And I think that that's what it, you know, really the way horn players and piano players work through things is, is like this. I've never seen or heard of a sax player that works on things that aren't related to the actual music he's playing. So anyway, what we want to do is take this exercise and create a different approach. So what I'm going to do is split the scale into two halves and we're going to use what's called tetrachords. So, and what this is going to create is something called scale passing tone drills. So we start on C major seven and I go root, second, three, five. Then I move up to D flat by a half step to the fifth. And I go five, six, seven, root. Then I move a half step up to the D major seven and go root seven, six, five. And then up a half step to the E flat major seven and go five sharp 11, three, root. From there, I'm just gonna repeat that sequence ascending. So we're then starting that sequence again on E. And this is gonna be useful because every time the sequence starts again, you would have gone through the span of four frets. So it's every fifth fret that you're going to start again. And what that creates is the interval structure of major thirds. So the next one starts on E, and I'm going to go root, second, three, five, then five, six, seven, root, then root, seven, six, five, and then five, sharp 11, three, and then root. And now I'm on my G major seven, okay? Then I'm gonna go up to the A flat. So remember what I said is the starting point of the pattern is gonna be from C, then to E, then to A flat. Now, as much as the pattern's important, we can't ignore that uh, the G geometry of the fretboard is something we can't ignore, but we must incorporate that with the knowledge melodically of each chord that we're playing over. You have to have that. So I need to know when I play uh, C major seven that this uh, root two, three, five is C, D, E, and G. And similarly, when I go to the E, I need to know that that's E, F sharp, G sharp, B. And same thing occurs with A flat, A flat, B flat, C, E flat. I have to know that. And interval knowledge and the knowledge of understanding how those things work is such a basic entity, but it's so important to get together. So we have to merge the two. So the pattern again up here is gonna go the same thing. I go root, two, three, five, then five, six, seven, root, then root, seven, six, five, and then I got five sharp 11, three, and then to the root. Now I'm back to the top here. And this is where we're gonna turn this whole pattern around. So here I've got the root, second, three, five. I move down a half step to five, five, six, seven, root. I move down a half step to the root, root, seven, six, five. And then I move down a half step to the fifth, five, sharp, 11, three, to the root. Notice how my pattern now is gonna start on the A flat. So it's the same thing now, but going back down. So it's descending down major thirds as our starting point for the pattern. So now I'm here and I go root, second, third, fifth. I descend down to the fifth of the G major seven and I go five, six, seven, root. 
Then I go root seven, six, five, and then I go five sharp 11, three, and then root of the F major seven. Remember the next major third down from A flat was E. So I start my pattern here. Root second, three, five. Five, six, seven, root. Then root seven, six, five. And then five, sharp 11, three, and root. And then I'm back to the beginning of my pattern. So if I put all that together, this is what it's gonna sound like. So the aim of this exercise is to be able to play through a set of chord changes seamlessly while understanding the relationship of the notes that you're playing to the chords you're playing over and then tying that in to developing a strong technical facility specifically to the bass guitar. I want you to pay close attention to the fact that we're not just merely running up and down scales, but instead learning to weave our way through the chord changes at a rapid pace by starting on different degrees of that chord. If you felt this lesson has given you a broader understanding and how to increase your technical facility, then please like it and share this video. If you're interested in one-to-one -one Skype lessons with me, then check out joehubbardbass.com and click on Study Bass with Joe. I have a wide variety of bass education programs including technical development, jazz improvisation, sight reading, ear training, and repertoire studies. Thanks for watching and until next time, practice smart, work hard, and play creatively. Mm -hmm.